Hi everyone and welcome to today's feature flurry. We're covering the geometry data type as part of our geospatial functions, which is now generally available. And my name is Suha Saya. I cover product marketing for the data warehouse workload. And today I have the pleasure to be joined by Alexi. Alexi, do you mind introducing yourself? Thanks, Suha. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Alexi. I'm a product manager for geospatial analytics in Snowflake. Awesome. And I would love to learn more about this new feature, the geometry data type. Can you give a short overview on what it is and what capabilities are available? I will start with a definition of what uh, geospatial data is. Data that stores information about objects and phenomena on the surface of the Earth, their features and special relationships. So, for example, uh, road or shape of the building or shape of uh, hurricane, those are all uh, geospatial objects. And to model them or store in the database, we need to use some shapes like points or lines or maybe polygons. And since those objects or phenomena, they exist on space, to describe them, people need coordinate system. For the last couple of years, Snowflake has been supporting geography data type, which uses coordinate system that takes into account that Earth is a spheroid. And anything located on Earth can be described using latitude and longitude as coordinates. Basically, road would be a line, maybe location of the building would be a point, or location of the car would be also a point. But although geography is a great option for those who work with global scale or on the global scale, many coordinate systems project those special objects to the flat surface and represent data in two-dimensional Cartesian plane. And those coordinate systems, they use not latitude and longitude, but rather meters or feet as coordinate. And this year we introduced a new data type, which supports those coordinate systems and it's generally available starting from May of this year. And we call it geometry. So by introducing geometry, Snowflake uh, customers from one side, they can uh, load any a uh, special vector object, and from other side, they can uh, use uh, geospatial features to work with those objects. Like, so basically, to put it simply, customers can load and process um, geospatial data in, uh, in two distinct ways, like geography, which represents data on the globe, and geometry, where spatial data is uh, projected to the plane surface. I loved hearing about those real life examples, Alexi, when you were describing the difference between the geometry data type and the geography data type. Uh, I would love to learn more about, you know, what impact this actually has on customers. And if you can provide uh, some color at, and some real life examples when, when speaking to that, that'd be really helpful. The thing is that um, geography data type, uh, which I mentioned before, it's a perfect solution for uh, for businesses that work on a broader scale, like logistic companies, they might track uh, locations of their uh, vehicles or trucks. Uh, micromobility, they track uh, locations of uh, scooters or cars. Food delivery companies, they use information that they acquire from GPS devices and rely on latitude and longitude to pinpoint uh, objects globally. For those, use cases, uh, geography is extremely useful. However, there are industries focusing on local areas where maintaining accuracy and reducing distortion is extremely important. There are use cases that require high precision, especially in asset heavy industries like power and utilities, manufacturing and infrastructure. You can imagine that if some company owns or maintains power grids and they start excavating, uh, error or mistake of a couple of meters can cost a lot. Energy companies who store power grids or local governments or real estate developers who store shapes of the buildings or parcels of land, which they maintain. Any company basically who work with localized special data might find geometry incredibly useful just because it offers more accurate representation of uh, their specific areas of interest. It's awesome to hear why we decided to build this feature um, and how it helps customers. So, so thank you. Uh, I would love to learn a little bit more about what steps customers should take in order to take advantage of the geometry data type. Is there anything they need to do to get started? Yeah, of course. 
so probably the most important step is that customers uh, should use constructor functions to create a column of uh, geometry type from the data they want to load. Like today, there are three main formats that describe special vector objects. It's a GeoJSON, a well-known text, and well-known binary. If you store special data just as JSON or text or binary, it will not be automatically interpreted as uh, geometry. So no matter which spatial format you use, apply function uh, that called uh, to geometry to create a column of a geometry type. The next step is that if you have special objects that have uh, self intersections or spikes, those objects are considered as invalid. And if you want to load those objects into Snowflake as geometry, you should do it by explicitly setting a parameter of the constructor function, the parameter which allows loading invalid objects. And after loading those shapes, we recommend fixing them since some functions will return null if you pass invalid shape as an input. And by the way, same applies for geography. You can also load invalid shapes and fix them afterwards. On that note, I'm wondering if you have any other best practices or tips to share with our audience who's watching. I have a couple. Firstly, uh, there are thousands of coordinate systems, or sometimes they call the mapping systems. And each uh, such system is tailored for specific region or uh, use cases. A mapping system is basically it's a set of rules that describe how the globe should be projected into a flat surface for that particular region. And these systems are sometimes also uh, referred as a special reference systems. And it's important uh, for customers to specify uh, which mapping system they use in when they load in their data. This is important because when, for instance, visualization tool uh, that visualize their data load it, it should know in what mapping system to display this data. Or if customers, they want to join two data sets, uh, Snowflake also should know what coordinate systems those data sets are. Uh, because like if customers use uh, coordinate systems of uh, different, like different coordinate systems, results of join might be, so to say, unexpected. My second tip uh, is that you should carefully decide if you want to store and process your data as geography or geometry. Even though two data types have similar functions, uh, they might even sometimes have the same uh, names. Uh, the results of those functions can be significantly different. And for instance, if you use geometry to store uh, special objects with latitude and longitude as coordinates, Snowflake will treat those coordinates as if they are linear measurements on the flat Cartesian plane rather than degrees on Earth sphere. And functions like ST area, when uh, you calculate the size of the area of the shape, um, might not return the results you expect. And for more details, you can refer to our documentation and Snowflake blog posts that explain the difference between the two data types. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alexi. It was great hearing more about the geometry data type, and I hope you all enjoyed hearing more about it as well. As Alexi said, be sure to take a look at our documentation and blog posts, which we will link in the descriptions below, um, and we're excited for you to get started with using it. Thank you. Thank you.